Hi, welcome to the new session. Today we are discussing about certain concepts of concepts of. See, in the introduction part of accounting, we have studied that accounting is the language of business. Accounting is the language of business. That means accounting is used everywhere. Very very well. And if, suppose you are getting graduates of accounting in a particular country, and then if you are going abroad for doing the work as an accountant, the things which are practiced there will be familiar to you. That means what you have studied in your country will be applicable in the country where you are going. That means accounting will be same everywhere. The usage of accounting will be same. The method used in accounting, the method used in accounting, the principles used in accounting, everywhere, everything will be same. Why that is like that? Why there is no change in the application of accounting from country to country? That is because of certain principles. These principles are called generally accepted accounting principles. Generally accepted accounting principles. We call normally it as G A A P. Generally account accepted accounting. That means accounting principles are accepted generally everywhere. Everywhere accounting principles are accepted. So that accounting principles, certain principles are there in accounting, and all those principles, all those principles are applicable universally, accepted universally. So these generally accepted accounting principles or these principles we will classify into mainly three different categories. They are concepts or assumptions or concepts of conventions, then assumptions and modified principles. Okay. According concepts, assumptions and modified principles. These are the three categories, main three categories in generally accepted accounting principles. Out of that, today we are going to discuss about accounting concepts. Accounting concepts. What are these accounting concepts? Accounting concepts are certain principles or rules or concepts or rules or conventions that are practiced universally during the entering of business transactions in the books of accounting and not only regarding the entering, it is regarding the communication of information also. Okay. So various principles or rules followed in Maintaining books of account can be called as accounting concepts. Okay? Various rules or conventions or principles followed in accounting or in maintaining books of accounts are called as accounting concepts. Here we will study about different six different concepts of accounting. Six different concepts of accounting. We can discuss one by one. The first one is Business entity concepts. Business entity concepts. Business entity concept says that business is a separate entity. Business is a separate entity. What is entity? Do you remember about the term entity? We have discussed that in one of our video a special terms in accounting. Their entity we have explained as entity means something which has a separate existence. 
entity is something which has a separate existence. Here it says that business entity concept. That means business has separate existence. Business is an entity having separate existence. Okay. That means business is independent from the person who control it. In simple term, we can say that business is different from its own. Business is separate from its owners. Okay. Suppose we can say an example. Atul started a business. Atul started a business. See, Atul is the Atul started a business. So Atul is the owner, and business is the he started a business. These are two different persons. He started business by investing some money. What is investment in the business is called capital. Yes. He invested 10 lakh rupees and started a business. He given 10 lakh rupees to the business, invested in the business. This is for him, it is capital. This amount is called capital and this is his investment the business will consider it as a liability why it is considered as a liability that is because of the business entity concept liability means the obligation to pay some money or something to others or the obligation to pay something of value to others is called a liability See, business, if get some capital from the owner, business consider it as a liability. Why? Because owner is an outsider. Owner brought 10 lakh rupees into business. So what business will think? Whenever the owner asks it back, we have to pay it. Since he brought the money into the business, he, since he invested the money into the business, at any time he can ask the money back. So we are responsible to pay it back. We are means the business. Okay? Business is responsible to pay the money back to him. So capital is our liability. Capital is the liability of the business because owner is an outsider. Owner is not the business. Business is separate, owner is separate. Owner started a business means we borrowed some money from the owner. At any time we can ask that and we have the obligation to pay it back. Clear? Then let us see the next one. That is what according in business entity concept says. This business entity concept is otherwise called as accounting entity concept. Accounting entity concepts. Business entity concept of accounting entity concept. This is accounting entity concept because in accounting point of view, business is an entity. Business is a separate entity. Okay. Clear? So, owner is not the person inside the business. Owner is an outsider. So, the money contributed by him will be considered as the money he invested into the business and we have to pay it back. So, it is our obligation. Suppose we have studied about drawings. We have studied about drawings. What is drawings? The money or goods taken over by the proprietor or owner from the business. The cash or goods taken over by the owner from the business is called drawings. Suppose this 10 lakh rupees he invested. Out of that, 1 lakh rupee he has taken back. That business given to owner. He taken back means he given to him. But it is this is drawings. Okay. That is drawings. This drawings, that much money he has taken back. Now how much money we have to pay to the owner? One lakh he has taken away. Now it is nine lakh. That means his capital reduced from 10 lakh to 9 lakh. Okay, 10 lakh to 9 lakh. Now our liability is 9 lakh only because 1 lakh we has already taken. 
That's why drawings will be deducted from that. That also asks for the business entity concept. Now, next concept we are discussing, but it is money measurement concept. In the definition of accounting, we have this we have told about money measurement concept. In that definition, we have studied that. In accounting, transactions and events which are in terms of money is recorded in the books of accounting. Transactions and events which are in part at least of financial character will be recorded in the books of accounting. So that is what money measurement concept says. That means money measurement concept says that transactions which can be Measure in terms of money only can be recorded in the books of accounts. Transactions which can be measured in terms of money only will be recorded in the books of accounts. Or in other ways, you can say that monetary transactions only can be recorded. That means in books of accounts, we measure the transaction in terms of money only. There is no question of writing any of the transaction in any other place of measurement like kilogram or length of meter or centimeter ton like that no other measurement only money measurement is it clear a simple example in your classroom any desk and benches are there if you go and check in the books of account in your school school office there it will not be mentioned that 20 desk and 20 benches are there in your class you will mention that desk this much rupees. The asset of desk and bench, or you will write in total furniture this much. It will be mentioned about in the case of number or kilogram or length like that. All the transactions will be measured in terms of money only. That's what money measurement concept says. For example, we purchase the furniture. Furniture purchased rupees 2 lakh. In this transaction, we will not ask that how many pieces of furniture purchased and which are they. Nothing will be mentioned. What will be purchased? What will be mentioned? In rupees. Furniture purchased for 2 lakh. That actually, no other piece of measure. Okay, then let us see the next one, third one, what it is going concern concept. What is this going concern concept? Says that business goes forward. Does not mean that business is moving from one place to another. It means that business is having an indefinite life, long period of duration or long period of life is there for them. That means no business is started to wind up in the near future. No business is started to wind up in the near future. The purpose of business or purpose of starting the business is to continue the business for a long period of time. Why we have to come? And consider that point here. That is about the purpose and usage of assets. Purpose and usage of assets. See, here we have studied that furniture purchased for 2 lakh rupees. Furniture purchased 2 lakh. This 2 lakh rupees will not be considered it as an, an expense which will be completed in one year. This is an expense for the for long period of time. So in that way, what we will do in the books of account first year we will write in the books of account at the time of purchase of furniture we will write furniture purchase this month furniture this month and at the end of the year for at the end of the year means every year wise only we will prepare the 
books of account that we will discuss as a next concept okay in at the end of the year we will calculate that how much value of furniture is used how much value of furniture is used that means this furniture is used in the business and how much benefit we have received from that suppose not in the case of furniture you can you can understand more if we tell about a machine machine a machine is purchased for production that machine if after purchasing that will be used in our business isn't it so since we use that business, machine in the business its cost will reduce a simple example you are purchase you have purchased a bike after one year if you sell that bike will you get the same price you have paid at the time of its initial purchase will not get why because the quality increase that much on that much usage was there that much time one year you have used the so it's a quality decrease and we have got some benefit so we will write off some amount as the expense of that asset for example like this one year we have used the machine in our business and for that we have calculated 10000 cost is there 10000 value is reduced that reduction in the value of asset we will call it as depreciation depreciation this much value is spent for the business one year this much expense happened so remaining how much 1 lakh 90000 is there for the next year one year this much is used next year remaining 1 lakh 90000 is there and suppose in that year also 10000 is used remaining how much it will be 1 lakh 80000 Okay, so this is the basis why we record asset in the balance sheet. Balance sheet we have studied the list of or the statement showing the value of all the assets and liabilities. So every year the asset will be shown in the balance sheet after deducting how much value spent or how much value of asset decreased. After deducting that decrease, the remaining will be shown in the balance sheet. If somebody asks you that why on which on what basis the asset is shown in the balance sheet, you can definitely tell that that is because of the going concern concept. Asset is to be used for a long period of time, so every year we have to deduct how much value decrease and remaining will be shown in the balance sheet and in the lifetime of the asset. The lifetime of the asset will be calculated in advance. Okay, there are several, several what way of calculation to find out the lifetime. During this lifetime, the value of this expense will be deducted and remaining will be shown in the market sheet. That is based on going concept. Then next one is accounting period concept. What is this accounting period concept? Accounting period concept says that there is a period for maintaining books of account. It's simple thing that we know that the purpose of maintaining the books of account is to find out the profit or loss. Profit or loss. We call it normally it as trading result. Result of trading activities. That is either profit or loss. So if this profit or loss. In order to find out the profit or loss, we have to know that this is a system going concept. Goes forever. That means there is no intention to close the business in near future. So it has a long years of life. Is it possible to wait up to that many number of years to find out the profit or loss? Not at all possible. So what we will do? We will fix certain periods. During that much period, or during that period, how much profit is generated? How much profit is gained? Okay, that means we will bifurcate accounting books 
into different periods. During that much period, how many transactions were there? And out of those transactions, how much is the profit or loss? That we will find it out. And that period is called the accounting period. This accounting period is ranging from that means it ranges for a period of one year. Accounting period is one year always, and that can be the calendar year. Calendar year means the year which starts from 1st January to 31st March, 31st December. Or it can be from 1st April to 31st March. That is normally the financial year of all the companies. 1st April to 31st March. Or it can be from 1st June to 30th, 1st July to 30th June. Many of the cooperative societies are following the same. 1st July to 30th June. Or like that. It can be of any period for one year, ranging from any date to any date. Okay? What is the purpose of maintaining accounting period? To understand the trading result and financial position of the business period. Okay, the next concept, post concept, post concept, what post concept says that, here it says that the assets in the business will be recorded in its post price, the purchase of assets will be recorded in the books of account in its post price. What is post price? See, if you purchase a product, it will, it will have a selling price. Selling price. Or if you purchase, it will be called as buying price. Okay. So we can consider the selling price. Selling price of the an asset is 1,80,000. Okay, this asset was sold to us for rupees 1,80,000 and we spent for transportation, transportation we spent 5,000 rupees, 5,000 rupees we spent for transportation and loading and loading and unloading charge. We have spent around 10,000 rupees. 10,000 rupees we spent for loading and unloading. So it was unloaded into our business. Now what we have to do is to install. So for that installation, installation charge we have paid again for 5,000. Okay. Total, we paid this much for the assets. Now the question is that, which value can be shown as the value of that machine? Which value can be shown as the value of that machine? Is it either the selling price of this from like 80,000? Or the transportation charge around? Or can we include all these charges in the value of as such? Yes, the concept says like that. But it says, first concept says that assets should be written in the books of account in its post price, not in the buying price or selling price. Okay, so this is the cost price. Cost price includes the purchase price plus all other expenses related to the asset. So in the books of account, by entering the value of asset, we have to write the value of asset as 2 lakh rupees. The value of that machine is 2 lakh rupees and not 1 lakh, 1 lakh 80 rupees. That is what cost of asset says. Okay? Clear? The, in the books of account, the value of asset will be mentioned as 2 lakh, that means in the cost price and not in the purchase price. That means cost price includes purchase plus price plus all other expenses 
until the machine started to use in the business. Okay. That means that is the cost of price. That cost of price only should be written in the as the value of as such. Yes. Then next year, dual aspect concept. Dual aspect concept. It is otherwise called the duality concept. This is the most important concept in accounting. Dual aspect concept says that all transactions, a business transaction will have two aspects. Or a transaction will have two aspects. Two aspects will be there. That is duality concept says. These two aspects, for example, purchased goods for cash purchase goods for cash for this 20000 okay this is the transaction this transaction has two aspects one aspect we can say that it is cash and another is purchase okay or we can say that goods came these two aspects we can say it as a receiving aspect, receiving aspect and a giving aspect, giving aspect. Receiving aspect is called debit aspect, debit aspect and giving aspect is called credit Debit aspect is denoted as DR. Credit aspect is denoted as CR. Okay. These are the two aspects. Debit aspect and the credit aspect. Debit aspect always shows as DR. Credit aspect always shows as CR. Debit aspect means receiving aspect. The aspect which shows the receipt. Giving aspect means the giving aspect or credit aspect. That means that aspect is the aspect which means. Here we can consider two aspects. Goods and cash or purchase and cash. Okay. What happened to cash? When you purchase the goods, what will happen to cash? Cash will go. That means cash gives. So we can write cash as credit aspect. And we purchase the goods. So what came, what received? Goods came. Okay. Goods came. If goods came, we will show it as purchase. Okay, that we will study afterwards why it is like that. So anyway, this is the debit aspect. Purchase of goods is the debit and the cash is the credit aspect. Okay. Now let us see the next one. Okay. Next example, we will see Yes, the next example, let us see Receive Rupees 10,000 from Kamalish Received 10 rupees 10,000 from Kamalesh. So we know that there are two aspects debit aspect, that means debit is the receiving aspect. Receiving aspect and a credit aspect, that means giving aspect. Received rupees. Received rupees 10,000 from Kamlesh. So, which is the debit aspect? This is the credit aspect. Two aspects are there. Received rupees 10,000. Rupees 10,000 means cash. From whom? 
कमलेश सो व्हाट इज द रिसीविंग एस्पेक्ट हियर यस ऑफ कोर्स कैश इज द रिसीविंग एस्पेक्ट सो कैश कैन बी डेबिटेड एंड हु गिव्स कमलेश गिव्स सो कमलेश इज द क्रेडिट एस्पेक्ट ओके लाइक दैट एनी ट्रांजैक्शन यू कैन टेक in all the transaction all the business transaction it will have two aspects a simple thing a glass of milk is given by your mother to you there is no finance there it is not a financial transaction but there are two aspects in that what you received milk milk is the receiving aspect and who gives that mother so mother is the giving aspect so you can write milk debtor and mother credit means you are credited to your mother okay understood so every transaction has two aspects whichever transaction you can consider all such transaction has two aspects the receiving aspect and the giving aspect and based on this duality concept we develop the basic equation for accounting which is called as assets is equal to liabilities plus capital asset is equal to liabilities plus capital so this is the basic equation in accounting so this equation is based on the duality principle or dual aspect of it let us see that with an example in the here first we have discussed that a person started business with the cash okay so ashok started started business with rupees 10 lakh So he started business from this with rupees ten lakh. So this is transaction. It has two aspects. What it is? First, rupees ten lakh. And Ashok he started business. Ashok he started business means that is the money contributed by Ashok. Money contributed by Ashok is called capital. So capital is one aspect, and cash is another aspect. What is the receiving aspect? Cash. Cash came to your business. So we can write cash, which is our debit. Cash is the debit aspect. And which is the giving aspect? Who gives? Ashok. Ashok gives. That means Ashok can be written. That can be written as Ashok's capital. Ashok's capital. That means Ashok is the giving aspect. Ashok can be the debtor. So with this transaction, we can check that whether this transaction is correct or not. First aspect is cash. Cash is an asset we study. Okay, so cash can be shown here. Ten lakh rupees. Okay, cash claim is equal to it should be liability plus capital. Capital is there here. Ten lakh rupees. Both side equal now. Understood? So capital is a liability and cash is an asset. And liability is included. Capital is also a liability only. Why we have why not take it because this is these liabilities are outside liabilities. Means the liability which we have to pay outsiders other than owners. This is the liability to the owner. Okay. Next we have to write that there are ten thousand or one lakh rupees we withdraw. He withdrawn one lakh rupees. So what will happen to cash from the cash one lakh? He has to pay to him. So cash decrease how much? One lakh decrease. He given to him. So now this much is there with us? No, one lakh he has paid. So that can be deducted here. Now he has to pay nine lakh. Okay, and here also 
Okay, at that time, say at that time we purchased an asset. We told you our machine purchased for two lakh rupees. Purchase the machine. Rupees two lakh. If you purchase a machine, cash will decrease. Cash will decrease. How much? Two lakh decrease. Okay. Any effect will be there in the initial capital? No, no effect. Then how it will be balanced? Now here it is seven lakh, isn't it? But here the capital nine lakh is there. Can it be balanced? It can be balanced because furniture for machine gain. Machine is an asset. Okay. So machine. What is the cost of machine? Two lakh. So machine gain. We will write machine plus machine added. So this became seven lakh. Plus machine two lakh. Again it became nine lakh. Is equal to nine. So in that way, in any transaction, you can try with any of the transaction. The final answer will be asset is equal to liabilities plus capital. That is what we last time concept says. These are the various accounting principles or concepts we have to study here. We have discussed business entity concept, money measurement concept. Going concept concept, accounting period concept, cost concept, and the last one, dual aspect of duality concept. Okay, I hope all of you understood this.